up your gun and call up your dog. Shoulder up your gun and call up your dog. Away to the woods to catch your groundhog. Oh, groundhog. Uh, can't remember any of his words. Uh, Pick up your gun and grab a pole. Pick up your gun and grab a pole. Push that whistle pig out of his hole. Oh, groundhog. 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 Come here, Sal. Come here, Davy. Come here, Sal. Come here. Get a little taste of that groundhog gravy, oh groundhog. What you don't eat, you put it on the shelf. What you don't eat, you put it on the shelf. If you want any more, you can get it yourself. Oh groundhog. I couldn't help it. I wish I had gotten those words a little bit better, but seeing Lewis talk about that groundhog giving us a little more winter, figured might as well give him a run for his money. But, <laughs> welcome everyone. That was a little un irregular start to the old Mando Lessons Live. I like to keep things loose around here. Uh, hope you're all doing well. My name's Baron Collins Hill. It's great to hang out with all of you. Sorry that this week's, I forgot to do the, uh, to set up the live stream early, so it was the very last minute. I went to, like, turn on all the software today, and I was like, Where, where's the thing I'm looking for? And I just hadn't done it. I'm also going to blame the, blame the groundhog, um, because that's the thing to do. If you're new here, let me know in the chat if there's any first timers. I'd love to see new folks uh, saying hello. Uh, the way these work is, is I'm pretty much here for you. If you got questions, throw them in the chat. I love hearing what people are up to, what they're working on, what they're having issues with. No question is too simple, no question is too advanced. It's all good. I can play some traditional fiddle tunes and things like that. No uh, copyrighted material, but uh, yeah, we'll have fun, so throw in suggestions if there's anything you want to hear. Uh, that was not the tune of the week. The tune of the week this week I'll play now it is... Do, 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 when That Shakes the Barley. shakes the barley so we're gonna jam around on that a little bit at the end of the hour so stick around a nice irish single reel a nice short one in the key of d i hope i can play it right at the end i have to look it up there's a bunch of tunes that sound like that in the irish tradition and i can never keep them straight so i might have to cheat at the end as well i had to cheat right before the live stream started but, all right, we got Lindsay and Denise and Geroid and Sheldon and Jim and James and Lewis, Dale, Donald, J2, Wava, Sal, Soma Deep, good to have you, Betsy, The Real Wolf, Jane, James, Robert, 
Diane, all sorts of folks in the chat. Great to see you all. Gary, Kyle, Dale, Peter. Awesome. Folks from all over the world. Glad to see it. Make sure I didn't miss any questions in there. Yep, definitely some groundhog talk. Glad to hear it. More snow, yeah. This is my first year without snow moving to Oregon. I haven't... I mean, it's it's uh, flurried a little bit, but I'm from Maine where we get a lot of snow all the time. Cool! Jane is playing tenor guitar tune CGDA. Any tips or pointers? I mean, a lot of it is, uh, you know, so that's mandola tuning for the mandolin family instrument. Um, with that tuning, you know, I think there's a lot that's going on that's similar to mandolin. Most of it kind of physically is just getting used to the longer scale length and kind of figuring out which fingers to use, kind of one finger per fret, or one fret per finger versus two frets per finger on a mandolin um, or a shorter scale instrument. And it can also depend on the scale of your tender guitar and what feels comfortable for you. But, um, you know, besides the kind of physical things of, you know, getting used to the longer scale length, uh, there's just some things, especially when we're talking fiddle tunes. You can do a lot of great fiddle tunes on CGDA instruments. Um, so you just have to, like, change the octave sometimes. So, um, for example, uh, Angela and the Baker... The B part, this is all fine. That getting up there to that F sharp on a C G D A instrument, you got A, D, E, F sharp, you'd be on like the ninth fret. And then we have which is the fifth fret on the E string, which is an A, which would be twelfth fret on your A string. So that's really jumping way up there. So you gotta take that tune down an octave. And then it'll fit on mandola better. do that on the mandola. My mandola is in the shop just for a little touch up on one thing, but I'll have it back next week probably. So yeah, just kind of, you know, getting used to playing things in different octaves just so you can actually be playing in the same key as everyone and not feel like you need to be way up the, the fingerboard is my main thing of sort of getting used to CGDA. You know, you can start out by thinking and like kind of transposing in your brain everything from mandolin, but after a while it it sort of becomes more easier and more natural and a little more helpful to not feel like you need to transcribe or transpose all the time. And you can really just kind of use the mandola for what it is, fully understanding how it's tuned and sort of where the notes are, rather than saying like, okay, my D string on my mandolin, but it's a mandola or a tenor guitar, so that means it's a, the second, the fourth, third string is a G string, so then I go to the second fret and that's an A. That's a lot of kind of translation to do on the fly. And it's good to, you know, get your bearings at first, but really see if you can start to get the instrument um, kind of in your brain and in your hands enough that you don't need to do all that transposition all the time. All right, great question, though. I love tenor guitars. I love mandolas. I love all instruments, as you may be able to tell from the carnage behind me. All right, more folks chiming in. Great to have you here. Kyle says, question, I have a hard time getting my speed and accuracy up on the G and D strings, like on the A part of Jerusalem Ridge. I think uh, the biggest thing, uh, I had the same issue learning to play claw hammer banjo, um, where, you know, your thumb is always hitting that high string, but then your, your kind of other finger, whether it's your pointer or your middle, is kind of moving between the other strings. And I always had time with that hard time with that lower string. I think, um, you know, the thing to do whenever you find things getting sloppy is to really just slow down, kind of double down your focus on that thing. Um, so, you know, if you're on the G string, just play it super slow.
something like that. I don't know exactly how you're playing it. I'm not going to play the whole thing because of copyright material or copyright reasons. But uh, great tune. You know, just take it nice and slow. Make sure you're nice and relaxed. You've got a nice follow through with your right hand. Everything that's sort of the same that you're not having troubles with on your higher strings. And just, you know, I think the biggest thing, just take it slow. Get a good tone out of the instrument. Make sure you're nice and precise. You're not hitting other strings when you don't mean to. And you're still getting a nice full sound. And then slowly speed up from there. Varela from Italy, good to have you here. Thanks for joining. And uh, 43 says, I'm new to the mandolin. Been playing octave mandolin. Bought a Johnson Eastman. Beside Gold Toner Eastman, is there any recommendations not crazy about the Johnson? Uh, yeah, so I like I like Eastmans. Um, I like Kentuckys. Those, those are kind of my standard go-to recommendations is the Kentucky. Um, so Kentucky and Eastman are the big two, at least in my my book. I think the most important thing to do is find an instrument that you know is well set up. Um, so, you know, getting it from either a well-respected store in your area or going online and finding a website like uh, Elderly Instruments or the Mandolin Store, both of which do a great job setting up the instrument. Whereas if you just buy it from someone you're not familiar with on eBay, they're probably, potentially I should say, not probably, but potentially just getting the box from the factory, not even opening it up, shipping it onto you, and then you get an instrument that need that doesn't play easy, doesn't sound very good, and you need to dump more money into getting it set up by a skilled professional. Um, so, it, you know, it's, it's best to find a well-respected store that's got an instrument in it that... Uh, and they do a good setup on, so you just get something that's ready to go. Um, Alright, that's my uh, thoughts there on instruments. Tim says, saying that I can smell the... Oh, saying that, I can smell the spring. Been trying to learn fiddle tunes on the octave mandolin. I've been playing the whistle for 30 years. Cool. Glad to hear it. Uh, an A minor chord, I assume, in the first position. Here's my favorite. So it's two, two, three, uh, and then you can hit the open E string if you want, or you can just hit those three sets of strings, G, D, and A. Thank you. I, I, if that wasn't what you were asking, 43, uh, let me know and I'll readjust my answer. <laughs> but I think you were asking about A minor chord. Kyle Carey says, with a super chat and a super sticker, $10. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Sheba Dog shaking his hips saying thank you. Well, I'm glad the dog is enjoying it. <laughs> uh, I can't see the sticker, unfortunately, through my program. But I can see them after when I look back on on YouTube itself. But I appreciate the support, you know, all the super chats and the, I, there's a bunch of patrons in the house. Always great to see you all. Um, and folks that support me through the links in the description or whatever they are, whether it's super chats or PayPal donations, Venmo. I got uh, a merch store so you can get t-shirts and mugs and bags and all sorts of cool stuff. All that is, uh, Greatly appreciated, and uh, thank you all. No matter how it comes through, it's all the same to me, and couldn't do it without you. So thank you, Kyle. I also, and then somebody says, I know a Kyle Carey. I also know a Kyle Carey. Um, there you go. Have you ever played a stick dulcimer? Not really. No, I've, I've like, kind of held them, but I'm pretty lost on a dulcimer. Uh, elderly is great to work with. Agreed. They're the best. Uh, Mr. Master Uploader says, Is it really a bad thing if I prefer to pick with my little finger anchored on the body? My triplets are more smooth and consistent that way. I think it's to do with coming from playing guitar. So in general, 
Um, I don't kind of recommend people plant any number of fingers on the top of the instrument or the pick guard. Um, that said, there are amazing musicians who do, so um, clearly it works for some. I think the, if you're doing that and that's like something you're really comfortable with, um, just make sure that you're not like locking up all of these muscles. You know, you can feel precise w with your pick and having your fingers down. Um, because you're really kind of locked into place. So as long as you're nice and relaxed and you're not, you don't get like sore in your hand or feel like super stressed in your, in your muscles in these fingers, um, I would say that maybe isn't the worst thing in the world um, to be planting as long as you um, are aware that you want to be really relaxed. Because when I plant myself, like as soon as my fingers go down, like this whole part of my hand, I can just feel it seize up. Whereas if I'm playing my, my natural way, I feel very relaxed. Um, and yeah, there are, you know, people that come from either banjo or guitar, um, like three finger banjo, a lot of folks plant. Um, so, you know, there are people that do it. Just make sure you're not kind of causing muscular problems at the same time. All right, uh, cool. So that was the A minor from 43. Glad to hear it. Does Kentucky make an octave mandolin? I don't believe so. My go-to recommendation on oct octave mandolins is the Eastman MDO305. I've owned one of those in the past. Very cool instruments. Kind of the best, as far as I'm concerned, the best kind of bang for your buck for um, octave mandolins. It's car. It's Solid wood, carved top and back. Um, at least the top is solid, I think. Can't totally remember all the specs, but uh, great instrument. Love it. Um, really enjoyed owning one for a while. Okay, James, I think we know this, <laughs> the same Kyle. <laughs> uh, why did you... Oh, why did I shave? <laughs> I thought it said, why did you share? Uh, why did I shave? Just every once in a while it comes over me and I got to give myself a haircut and a, a fresh face. And then I just immediately start letting it grow out again. So I'm already looking a little scraggly, but it's uh, just, uh, you know, living in Maine, I often kept the beard because it was a little warm. But now I'm in Oregon and it feels tropical out here to me. It's not zero degrees Fahrenheit, so figured I'd live the tropical lifestyle. <laughs> Where can I find more tunes to play similar to what is available on your website? Uh, I would recommend the session. I mean, the, I think in normal times, I would say, you know, go find your local. If you're like burning through tunes on my website and you're running out, A, kudos. Like, I got a lot of tunes on my website and if you know them all now, amazing. Um, and, you know, go at that point, definitely when the time is right, go out, find some uh, public sessions, whether it's Irish music or old time music or both or where, whatever you're interested in, find people in your area to play along with. Um, in terms of internet resources, there's the session.org, which is great for mostly Irish music. Um, I have some on my website, there's a like a resources tab somewhere where you can find I, I link to the session and some other sort of tune compilations. There's some great books for Irish music, like uh, O'Neill's Music of Ireland is over a thousand fiddle tunes. Um, there's compilations of Quebec music. There's there's uh, like the bluegrass mandolin player has a bunch of fiddle tunes for mandolin. Um, kind of you name it, you can find it out there. If people have suggestions, by all means, throw them in the chat. For, uh, for Tony. Hey, Cheyenne, good to see you here. It's been a little while. Yeah, glad you're still picking on it. Uh, can I recommend one of your, one of my fiddle tunes? Oh, that's a good question. Um, off the top of my head, do you know, uh, Mississippi Palisades? It's on my old time mandolin album. Uh, I can't remember how it goes right now, but it's a great tune by Chirp Smith. Um,
Mississippi Palisades. It's on my website. It's on my old time mandolin album as well. One of my favorite tunes. I haven't played it in a while, so thanks for jogging my memory on that one somehow. But good to see you. It's been a little while. I'm glad you're getting back to it. Eric says, any thoughts on keeping a closed picking hand versus an open hand? Not sure how to phrase the question. I think I know what you're talking about. Um, so yeah, the question is, if you look at like how I play, I tend to have sort of like a loose fist. This is sort of usually described as like a closed picking hand. And then if you look at someone like Tim O'Brien, he plays with a very, rela again, relaxed. You don't want to be like flat like a board and, and uh, kind of really tense. But you look at Tim O'Brien and, uh, and other musicians, they, they'll play like... That's not my style, so I can't really do it. But, you know, it's hard to argue with a technique like Tim O'Brien's. He's like the most relaxed picker there is. Uh, I love his technique. I love his sound. I love all everything he does. Um, so, you know, in general, I think it's more natural for most people to do kind of loose fist closed picking hand. But if you're really gravitating towards the open style, and again, you can stay nice and relaxed, by all means, do your thing. Do you still have your blue chip you used to use? I don't. I sold all my blue chips when I found these, so I now use, I used blue chip CT55 for a long time, picks, what we're talking about. Um, and now I use these, uh, Dunlop Prime Tone 1.5 millimeter uh, big triangle brown picks <laughs> and I sold all my blue chips because I honestly couldn't tell the difference between them and so I sold all my blue chips and bought a couple dozen of these and still had a money left over and bought some strings or something but uh blue chips are great too no uh no shade to blue chips uh some people really prefer them over these. I just personally, in my own style, can't tell the difference. Getting ready for VMFC. I am, yeah, I'm excited. I'm gonna be teaching at Maine Fiddle Camp, virtual Maine Fiddle Camp, this coming February 19th to 21st. It's a great time. Maine Fiddle Camp is a camp I've taught at for over 10 years now, uh, up in Maine, believe it or not. But now, anyone, anywhere in the world can come because it is virtual. It's a $50 suggested donation this year for a whole weekend of great music. It's not just for mandolin players, it's for fiddle players too. And also guitar players and whistles and cellos and... Or you gotta look at the website, I can't remember exactly what's being offered. Tons of different instruments, so don't quote me on the cello, but I, I bet there's probably a cello group. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a, a ton of folks here that I'm seeing that are going to fiddle camp. I hope you all can join us, it's a great way to... Uh, meet up with a bunch of other mandolin players and uh you can't beat the commute so i'm looking forward to hanging with lewis and alf and denise it's gonna be a good time when learning a new tune a new song or tune i guess uh should the goal be to memorize it i would say yes definitely it's, it's great to be able to disconnect yourself from any kind of outside resource whether it's like having to hear the tune or having to read the tune, either tablature or standard notation. You know, once you have a tune memorized in your head, it becomes a little bit of memorization, but mostly muscle memory. You kind of got to figure out how to start the tune, and but then your fingers just take over and say, oh yeah, I've done this a lot. And then you just get to sit back and kind of enjoy what's going on around you while your fingers play the tune. It's a beautiful feeling, and uh, definitely, once you got it in your fingers, you know, as long as you can remember the tune, if, if all your uh, sheet music gets stolen, they haven't stolen your tunes. Slippery Hill is an awesome resource for old time music. Yeah, I love Slippery Hill. Denise says, I've never been to an old to a virtual music camp. What should I accept, expect at Maine Fiddle Camp? Virtual Maine Fiddle Camp. Uh, it's going to be, I'm not exactly sure on the, uh, the exact uh, kind of lineup. There's going to be the way it works is there's sort of a main tent, which is, at Main Fiddle Camp, it's sort of all under these kind of big pop-up tents in real life. And so now we've turned the tents into Zoom rooms. So we've got the main tent, which is where everybody can come together and just hang out, or occasionally camp director Doug will, uh, you know, have everybody there to explain how things work. 
um, introduce the staff, things like that. And then everybody breaks out into their instrument specific rooms. So I'm teaching mandolin in the mandolin Zoom room with my good friend uh, Glenn Loper, who I teach with every year at Main Vittle Camp. And what we're gonna do is get together as one big group and then kind of break, see what where people are at, what the experience levels are. All experience levels are totally welcome. Uh, you know, no matter where you're at, it'd be great to have you. And then um, from there, we'll see what people are interested in, where their experience level's at, and then we'll break up into two separate groups and, uh, you know, switch back and forth between the groups as instructors so you get to see everybody. And you're, you're free to kind of bounce around between the groups and see what you're... You can even go sit in on a different group. Um, so there's going to be a couple mandolin workshops throughout the day. And then there's a time for specialty workshops where you get to, uh, you know, people can teach things that aren't their average uh, instrument. You know, so I might do a one on... I might, I'm thinking about doing a specialty workshop on double stops for any instrument tuned GDAE so I can help some fiddle players get uh, double stops under their fingers and mandolin players, tenor banjo, all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, and then there's going to be some camper concert, so you can upload a video to YouTube of you playing, and then we'll put it into a little playlist that there's a time to watch that. There's going to be a variety show where everybody gets to watch this, uh, this kind of stitched-together performance of both campers and staff and some hilarious MC shenanigans and antics. It's going to be a good time. And you just get to meet a bunch of other great folks who are interested in fiddle tunes. All right, Rick, good to have you here. Uh, a request for an easy version of Turkey in the Straw. Also show easy chords and also golden flippers. I'll see what I can get through out of that. Um, so Turkey in the Straw is great. A great tune because you can really play it any number of, any amount of like notiness. So in, usually it's in G. Something like this. this I'm just kind of making up a version. Just let your ear guide you. Or you can make it really noty. Same tune, same speed, essentially. I might have sped up a little bit in the second one there, but you slow that same speed down. And you're back to the simple version. Um, in terms of chords and also golden slippers and turkey in the straw, um, a little notier version is on my website, mandolessons.com, free to watch anytime. Uh... All right, Julia from Germany, great to have you here. Atomic Punk says, I blame you for being addicted to mandolin. Guilty as charged, thank you. I'm glad I could uh, get you hooked. Coming over from six string, buying my first mandolin. Glad to hear it. It's a fun instrument. It's a lot easier to carry around than a guitar in my experience. Yes, Shane Farrell and Turkle 14, great mandolin players on YouTube for the Irish stuff. Both are great. Yep, Peak Fiddler, David Benedict, who just did a live stream that I was hanging out in. David Hansen, Fiddlehead, yep. 
all these are great resources. All right, Mr. Master Uploader says, thanks for the response. Uh, hello from the west coast of Ireland. Welcome. You should come visit. Oh, I was there and I would love to get back. I went to the Baltimore Fiddle Fair in West Cork a couple years ago. Had a great time and then traveled around Ireland. Um, hope to get back someday when everything is back up and running. It was a, a beautiful visit and I hope to do it again soon. All right. Cheyenne, I've got you on Mississippi Palisades. I look forward to hearing it. <laughs> uh, does the melody style type playing often found in jazz work well on a mandolin? Play folk style on guitar and bought a mandolin one year ago. Like mandolin better. Cool. Yeah, mandolins are fun. Yeah, you can totally play jazz on the mandolin. Um, you know, whether that's kind of the... Comping, or you can... play melodies and solos you can also do amazing chord melody if you're into kind of that chord melody style that i can't really emulate look up aaron weinstein on youtube he's got a bunch of amazing videos of him playing he's an amazing jazz violinist and jazz mandolinist um, i met him at django in june a million years ago out in western massachusetts and he does some he has, he, he literally wrote the book on uh chord melody mandolin playing Let's see. What time would you play in a... Oh, what tune would you play in a foggy castle courtyard at night? Oh, that's a good question. What, what, what country is your uh, castle in? That's the next question. Just got my mandolin the other day. Already learned a few tunes, but video and content are amazing. Cool. Glad you're enjoying the stuff. Awesome. You got Coolies Reel. That's a noty tune. That's quick progress. Took me forever to learn Cooley's Reel. Why do you use heavy strings over medium or light? Uh, so on this mandolin, which is a modern, kind of bluegrass style mandolin, um, built by Tom Ellis in 2009, um, I, have a, I play pretty hard with my right hand. So if I really want to, you know, get swinging through the strings, I find that the medium heavy, so I use... Dario EJ75, which is kind of a little bit heavier. I don't think it's a, a true heavy, but I think they call it like a medium heavy. Um, and I just find I can kind of push the instrument a little more without the strings kind of giving up and getting and kind of losing a little bit of their tone. I feel like if you push light strings really hard, things get buzzy and, uh, you know, you, you kind of lose some tone out of them. That said, with older instruments, like... Uh, this old Gibson from the 20s, I use uh, either medium or light or somewhere in between on those because they weren't built in a time where heavy strings were being used. They're light, more lightly built. Um, and so it's a little bit instrument dependent, but then also a little bit of personal preference. Excellent, some great Irish recommendations from Tim on Irish tunes. Cool, glad people are enjoying the lessons. Cool, Lewis has got some good insights into VMFC. Um, he was there last time, you can probably field some of those questions. I was mostly working the, the back end Kind of technical side of things last time so i didn't get to really uh participate in camp in the way i'm going to this time are you doing bubble notes so yeah the most recent lesson i did was on what i'm calling bubble notes i don't know if there's actually a real name for it um but it's just sort of like i like to kind of get this little in between zone between really legato smooth playing And super staccato 
both are great, but um, I've been really kind of having fun. Making that staccato sound a little softer and really kind of trying to push it out just a little bit to kind of get this little like puh sound out of the instrument. It's kind of similar to the sound of a nice kind of full chop. You know, it's not, some people chop very staccato like and, but some people will also play with kind of a fuller tone of like and you get this sort of little like blooming effect on the note that I've been playing around with. That's the most recent lesson that I put out on the website. Is remembering a tune simply a matter of playing that tune a lot of times or does learning it in sections help? How do you approach this yourself? Both ways. Um, I think you kind of get different things out of a tune, um, both by just letting it kind of wash over you and picking up what you can and being a little, not necessarily sloppy, but uh, you know, like getting, getting comfortable with the idea that like a tune is happening. I'm not gonna get it all in one sitting, that's okay a lot of it can come over time. So if you go to an Irish session or any music session and hear a tune a bunch of times, first time you hear it, you're like, oh, that's a cool tune. I don't know any of it. The next time you hear it, you're like, oh, that's a cool tune. I think it's in D. And you, you play a D note and you're like, yeah, it sounds like a, a D. And then you hear it the third time and you're like, oh yeah, that's the one that starts. But that's all you get. And then the next time you're like, oh yeah, that's the tune. I think it's called Miss Monahan's and it's in D and it has that phrase. But that's all I know. And then the next time you're like, oh yeah, Miss Monahan's. I think I've got most of the A part of that one. Now all I need is. And then it just all repeats. Um, so there's a very kind of cumulative effect or in the way that I teach them on my website and on YouTube, I just kind of break them down into the way that I like to learn tunes and sort of a, a little more digestible to learn an entire tune in a sitting. Both ways are great. Both have their pros and cons. Um, I find that if I learn a tune in sections, I can get it all really uh, a little quicker, but then I don't retain it in the same way as just like hearing it a lot and kind of just noodling with it and getting a little note here and there. Um, I'm actually working on a project that involves that question a little bit that I'm excited to share with you all in the middle to end of the month. When the Saints, by adding chord, so I think When the Saints is unfortunately copyrighted, but uh, that's a fun one. Wowva, thank you so much for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Do you have Irish roots? Not, I've never done like a full genealogy. I have a lot of German and English roots. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some Irish as well, but um, not to my knowledge. Hey, Oscar from Norway, good to have you here. To the chord player. Yeah, Don Sternberg is a great jazz mandolinist as well. Ah, can I request Bill Cheatham or Red Haired Boy? Definitely. I was just listening to one of my favorite old time fiddle players. Just put out an album yesterday. His name is Joseph DeCosimo. Can't remember the name of the album, but uh, if you look up Joseph DiCosimo, you can find this album that just came out the other day. It's like there are something Creek Ramblers, Rocky Creek Ramblers, maybe. Um, and they played a nice version of whatever that one is that I've already forgotten the name. Bill Cheatham. I won't play it like them, but I'll play it like me. <laughs> here. by a bird out the window.
<laughs> Whoa. Not my cleanest version of Bill Cheatham. It's been a little while since I played that, but fun nonetheless. Daniel says, tuning in from the island Puerto Rico. Great to have you here. Cool. Glad you're glad you're getting some get, get got a mandolin and uh, are going for it. That's, I'm glad you're enjoying the instrument. Tony, thank you so much for the super chat. Glad you're enjoying it as well as Gary. Thank you both and everyone who supports me one way or another. I do have German roots. I don't know any German music, unfortunately, though. I wish I did, but I don't. Ah, Ron says he's having trouble getting either an Eastern or a Kentucky. I know there's other brands over in England, uh, or the UK, he didn't say England specifically, um, where I would go on Mandolin Cafe and ask people over there or do some searching in the forum, because um, I know there are other options over there. I'm just less familiar with them. Whoa! You and Bleach or Black? Is a great jazz multi instrumentalist who learn it says learn a tune backward phrase by phrase is a good way to learn. Cool. I'll have to look him up. Oh no problem, dance tune. I had a little bit of a technical issue today where I forgot to. Uh, uh, Dan was just saying somehow I missed the beginning. Yeah, I my uh, I forgot to make the live stream like visible yesterday so it just kind of popped up last minute um and then i did start on time but if anyone missed any of this or all, ever wants to revisit them you can always watch them after the fact skip around you can also go to my website click on the live q a button in the upper left hand corner and scroll down a little bit and you'll see where uh denise puts together some awesome um, resources for these where she has like links to time stamped little moments so it's like oh at 41 minutes in Baron played Bill Cheatham well that's probably actually a pretty close guess I didn't realize it was already 1045 um, and then you can click right to it um, search through it that way very appreciative of the work that Denise does on those uh, speaking of which as we're getting towards the end of the hour Get your mandolins out and tuned up if they're not already. And we're going to be doing a little bit of Wind That Shakes the Barley as a play-along jam in a few minutes here. Nice, we got some folks with good suggestions for Ron on places to find instruments. little break in the chat here I think I've caught up with everything so let's play a little bit of Wind That Shakes the Barley. The way this works is we'll pass the tune back and forth uh, it's in the key of D it's a great Irish tune it's a nice short tune it's called a single reel because it just is essentially A B A B rather than A A B B um, and it uh, we'll pass it back and forth I'll start out by playing the melody you can play some chords uh, then I'll play the chords while you play the melody. Um, apologies if I get a little sidetracked on this tune. I have a lot of trouble with a couple tunes that sound almost identical. So I might cheat a little bit and keep an eye on the music. But, uh... Just get that there in case I need it. <laughs> there's, a, there's a bunch of Irish tunes that sound really familiar to this. I won't even talk about them because if I do, then I'll definitely play it wrong. Um, you can ask me after the fact and I'll uh, I'll tell you all the ones that confuse me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll pass it back and forth, swapping off playing melody and playing chords. Great way to, uh, like I was talking about earlier, when a tune washes over you, if you don't know the tune, see what you can pick up. Uh, if you do know the tune, but you're just new to it, 
just you know, it's a great way to play it a bunch of times and get it cemented into your head. If you've been playing Wind That Shakes the Barley forever, maybe you can add some ornaments, some double stops. Maybe you can mess around with a little bit of ornamentation and uh, improvisation. And just kind of challenge yourself wherever you're at with it. So, Wind That Shakes the Barley. I already have to cheat. <laughs> Uh, all right <laughs> not too fast if you ever need to slow it down or speed it up you can by hitting the little gear in the bottom right hand corner of the video once it's uh fully loaded onto youtube and you're watching after the fact well right about there one two here we go Take it! Take it. Everybody together, melody. shakes the barley a beautiful tune it's kind of that's sort of the I was talking earlier I know a couple tunes that I get confused with that one I think of that as sort of the, the like the mother tune of a lot of the other tunes you know if you hear a tune that sounds like when the shakes the barley but it's got a different name and it's a little different people will often say like oh yeah it's it's kind of the when the shakes the barley thing so a couple examples just while I'm thinking of it um, see if I can get a couple there's one called the new found out So 
something like that. There's one that's, um... No, uh... <laughs> Very similar tunes. There's even more that I can't quite come up with right now. Um, but yeah, that's why my brain gets confused about those tunes. But Wind That Shakes the Barley is definitely the best known and the most kind of classic of them. Lewis says, just realized Mando Lessons went over 70,000 subscribers. Yeah, a couple days ago we hit 70,000 subscribers, which totally blows my mind. Thank you to everyone that subscribes and supports the channel in whatever way that you do means the world to me totally changed my life blows my mind daily thank you thank you thank you you all rock <laughs> uh on the way to 100 i guess cool all right let's see Fran says mississippi palisades was a little over my dried up fingers so i went with wayfaring stranger another great tune yeah you'll 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 get it back it uh it definitely can be a little you can feel a little rusty if you haven't played for a while. I feel that regularly when I play a lot of one instrument and then go to try to play, like, banjo or something, and I haven't in months. It uh, definitely takes a little bit of getting back to, but it's not... It, it always comes back quicker than the first time, which is a good reason to keep trying every once in a while. Cool. Haiti, maybe? I don't know how to say that name. It's a Norwegian band that does an awesome version of Wayfaring Stranger. Very cool. Awesome. Folks enjoyed that tune. Glad to hear it. Ron says, what are your thoughts on a Kentucky KM-150, and does it stack up against a similar Eastman mandolin? I love the KM-150. I think it's one of the best kind of bang for the buck uh, mandolins out there. It's my kind of recommended first instrument for a lot of people. And, you know, similar, very similar to, like, Eastman 305. I find the Eastman to be a little brighter, which is not a bad thing. You know, it's a little, like, sparklier. Maybe not quite as bassy as the K KM-150s that I've played. Um, but it's, it's a little, slightly different sound, but both are equal instruments in my eyes. Um, I don't really... I think I maybe prefer the Kentucky slightly over the Eastman, but I'm sure there's more variation, um, you know, between the few Kentuckys that I've played and the few Eastmans that I've played. So I think you're going to be in great shape with either one. And if you can find a shop that has both, try them out and see what you like better. Or look up online and see if there's some comparisons. Maybe I should do a Kentucky versus Eastman comparison. Katie, bar the door for the next week. That's a great tune. I haven't thought about that one in a while. Sure. Is that the right tune? Katie by the door. Okay, hang on. I learned this tune on banjo first, so let's see. There it is.
there's Katie Bar the Door. That's a great tune. I haven't thought about that one in a real long time. So let's do that one next week. Thank you for the suggestion. And the little brain recall. Cool, Dave's first time on the live. Great to have you here. Thanks for joining. Glad you could make it. Awesome, Monica also first time. Glad there's so many first timers. Great to see you all. Tunes on an octave mandolin. Well, I'm running out of time, and we're about at the end, and I've got some banjo questions here, so I'm going to run through those, but I'll get an octave mandolin out on a, uh, another stream. Do you have chord structures for the songs on your site? I do. So in the sheet music, whether it's tab this tablature and standard notation on one PDF, I also have the chords written out. Oops, the thing jumped. What's the easiest tune to play along with a backing track on my website? Um, Bridges Full of Stitches, maybe, is one of the simplest. Still waiting in the beginning, barely switch chords. Cool. Uh, let's see. Four, so that's actually a five-string banjo. Um, it's got this little short one. So, and then somebody said, what, what style of banjo playing is that? This is called claw hammer. So there's kind of two main styles. Of, well, there's a couple, but I'd say three main styles of banjo. Um, there's claw hammer, which, or also called bum diddy, because that's sort of the sound. Bum diddy, bum diddy, bum diddy. Sort of the Pete Seeger style, but kind of goes back further to uh, around Peak, North Carolina, and some earlier, even kind of back into some like kind of early classical banjo styles. Um, and then there's three finger kind of bluegrass, which I can't do at all. And then there's uh, some two finger old time style. So claw hammer is what you often hear in old time music. And three finger scrug style is more of a bluegrass thing. And then there's some stuff in between. Glad people enjoyed the little banjo uh, cameo. Spanish Misfortune. Yes, definitely. I think we've actually done it a couple times. But um, if not, I'll look into that one. Any re recommendations on playing with others? Every time I hear other instruments, I get lost in my own playing. I think the best thing to do is just do it a lot, a lot, a lot. Play along with re recordings, especially now that there aren't jams to go to. Um, kind of know that it's okay to be lost. I, I get lost all the time. And uh, the more comfortable you are with the idea that you might get lost the less you'll sort of have a bad reaction when it happens and you can just sort of be like, all right, I'm lost, but where's the next spot to get back in and just keep on going. Hey, Turgle, good to have you here. We were just talking about you earlier. Somebody was asking about great Irish mandolin, uh, Irish mandolin YouTube channels and you were top of the list for sure. Great to have you here. Uh, do I have any lessons on claw hammer banjo? I don't. My favorite resource is clawhammerbanjo.net. There's also, uh, goes by Brain Joe. It's this guy, Josh Turknet, who's a great, uh, a great clawhammer banjo player and teacher. Clawhammerbanjo.net is pretty much where I learned how to play. Thank you for the super chats, Gary and Uncle Bobby. Really appreciate it. Cool. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in. Bridges for the stitches. Awesome. Nice. Jim's got a $30 banjo. I need to learn how to play. Yeah. Jump on and try it. Clawhammerbanjo.net. He also has a bunch of free videos on YouTube. Josh Turknet also goes by Brain Joe. Um, I can't remember exactly what his YouTube channel is called. But you search around those things, you'll find him. All right, well, thank you all so much for tuning in. It's been a great hour. Like I said, I do these all the time, most Saturdays anyway. Uh, always great to hang out. I also do patron-only live streams, which I just did one last week, um, where it's a little more mellow. I have an easier time keeping up with the chat and diving deeper into concepts. Thank you all for the super chats. 
Thank you to the patron supporters who are here. Uh, thanks for people who do PayPal. It all is the same, and I appreciate it all greatly. Uh, keep picking all week, and I'll see you next week. And I'll end with a little banjo tune. tune that I'm blanking on the name right now. I want to say Mississippi Palisades. It's something like that. Can't remember, but uh, maybe somebody in the chat can put it out there. Thank you all so much for tuning in. See you all next week. Bye-bye.